Aquarius. Hello Aquarius, Happy New Year. This is your January 2017 forecast. Astrologically, maybe you've listened to the full year forecast already. If not, you have that to look forward to as well. The lesson we're talking about this month. And it starts out here with some hopes and dreams in your financial area. Some of you can make it really, really big with a signature that's in the sky already January 1st, so they're at New Year's. Mars, which is your drive, your ambition, your goals, your attitude towards it being in the second house for money and income. You're getting all your ducks in a row. Not only that, are you physically and mentally now active in this area, but being infused with Neptune is your higher goals, your higher dreams, your vision for the entire year. So those of you who now dare to dream big can make it big in 2017. It's all about getting your intentions, planting those seeds, taking that first step towards financial freedom and wealth could come in and knock on your door if you do it right. For others, well, if you have doubt or wherever, if this constellation or this aspect is not really aspecting you in your natal chart, your birth chart, in a good way, say it's squaring, opposing it, well, some of you might have challenges that then you want to be quite aware about that Neptune isn't sending you off on a wild goose chase. If it sounds too good to be true for those of you there, well, maybe it is, but for others, those of you who have perfect aspects to your natal chart. With this aspect, you're the ones who are the winners. But the month is always very much so focused on where the sun is, and for you, it's in your 12th house. So it's stepping back. You were very busy here towards the end of the year, weren't you? So when it's in the 12th house, the sun, which is the essence of you, is now wanting to recharge a little bit of its energy before it makes its passage into your first house and into your sign. So as long as it's in Capricorn, it's going to also be visiting Pluto. That's an empowerment point. More on that later. But Mercury is also here. And Mercury is retrograde until January 8th. So we want to lay low on starting up anything new. We can think about it. We can tweak things. It's a time actually to revisit the past uh, people and situations, propositions and whatnot, and see if there's something there that you can still haul out of it. So it's good to be a little laid back and listening within. All that aside, let's talk about Venus, because Venus has been cruising your first house there in December, come into January, it, just absorbing all that beautiful Aquarian energy, which is the essence of you. I feel that you Aquarius have been very radiant, okay, and very attractive here in December, coming into the beginning of January. But lo and behold, on the 4th, Venus will move out of the first house of yourself and into the second house of money and income. Now, that's a good place for Venus to be because she rules the second house, um, which is the house of Taurus, which is going to help you focus more on the income that you're making, where is it coming from, can you refine it, um, Mars and Neptune is already there, so after the 4th, straight throughout this month of January, talk about crunching numbers, getting on board with everything. Mars is in this area only once every two years, so this is your shot at it this month, all right? Venus comes in once a year, so it'll only be a year till she's back, but you know, when she's back, Mars won't be there next year. So this is the time to really, really focus. It's only a matter of a few weeks, then it's going to be gone. So that is my hottest tip for you here now, Aquarius. Then we have the full moon, January 12th. This will be 14 degrees in Cancer. And, uh, the area that's going to be lit up for you is the sixth house of how you work, your daily routines. Is that working for you? Do you want to change it up a little bit? Are you working too much? Or are you not working enough? So the full moon here, whatever you've been working towards, now will come in and see and show you exactly what good of a job you have been doing. 
The new moon, on the other hand, is zero degrees in your sign. They're in Aquarius. So your first house is sitting right there on your ascendance. This is January 27th. What a time to plant new intentions uh, and new seeds, your goals for this date. So pay attention though, so that you can absorb the best out of this new moon is for you to focus on how can you grow, not just your personality, which the first house is, but how can you present what it is you stand for? Uh, how can you bring that out to the world? Um, and also to create more room and space for you. We all need a little me time off every now and again. So if you plant good seeds, you will see that this year will allow you a little bit more me time um, when it's focused upon. So let's start top of the month here. As we said, Mars Neptune, that is in your second house for money on the first. It will linger with you straight throughout the whole year though, but the initiation is taking place there. On the third, we have Mercury bringing good news here about uh, love and romance. It's Venus. Venus now here is still in your uh, first house. It's right on the cusp right there. So I'm feeling that this could be a, a a beautiful message from your significant other or also any money talks that you might be having could also uh, enhance your experience. On the 7th we have that annual meeting between the Sun and Pluto. This is your pivotal point of self-empowerment which happens only once uh, every year and so it's like right now up to until the 7th you're concluding that whole 12 month journey and now it's gonna be infused with that new self inner empowerment and you're good to go for a whole new 365 days, <laughs> all right? And then we have on the 11th, Mars and Pluto meeting up and you know, we've always said that Mars is not just action, it's dynamite, Pluto being nuclear. Put the two of those together in a great aspect, you can move mountains area for you here that you're going to be seeing this shift. So mark the 11th for it is between you and your second house of money, um, the dreams, the inner goals that you have been visualizing for so long, they can kick into action. This could be a good invest return, it could be a good contract coming in, it could be a bonus maybe, um, or it could also just be a promotion that's going to be paying you more. On the 12th, we have Venus meeting up with Neptune, just like Mars did on January 1st. But now Venus is coming in, covering that very same degree. This is a, a romance made in heaven. Venus, which is very romantic, Neptune be the, being the higher octave of Venus, makes it spiritually beautiful, otherworldly type energy. For those of you who are single, hey, don't sit at home. You want to be out and about because everybody is under the influence here on this day. So the signals are going out and whoever is meant to be will be magnetized together. And if you're in a relationship, listen, this is time for candlelight dinner and having some beautiful music on. Um, just really, really sweet. And if you're an artist, hey, let's not forget about you guys because why? Well, both of these energies are very artistic with shapes and forms and colors and so forth, but also uh, musicians, dancers, that kind of thing. Uh, absolutely a day for success or just being able to open up your channel and download all of that beautiful information and inspiration. We do have a couple of stop signs this month here, um, Aquarius. And uh, as frustrating as it may be in the moment, I want you to be aware when it comes that this is actually you looking out for yourself, your higher self looking out for yourself. Saturn restricts, right? It stops down. And it, 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 when Mars is moving forward like she, he is, he just wants to be on the go. Don't stop me, right? And so here comes Saturn, kind of holding you back. It has to do maybe with direction, uh, or making a decision, uh, do you hang a left or a right? Uh, Saturn's asking you, are you sure you want to do this? You know, that might give you some doubt. You thought maybe that was what you wanted, but then when you have to question it, then we second guess ourselves. Maybe this is what we want, or maybe this is the direction we want. 
However, though, you don't have to catch a train. Whenever in doubt, I always say step back, do nothing, sleep on it, right? And then once the information comes to you, then you'll have that feeling of conviction. That is coming already the next day when Venus here will be meeting up with Pluto. Talk about conviction. You're so ready to go. Um, Venus rules money. Pluto rules big money. Venus rules love. Pluto rules passionate love. So whatever the deal is, on the 20th, everything's going to come together and you're going to feel very aligned, good to go, transformationally so. On the 23rd, this is also a day where you can have just good news in the overall. It's a spiritual day. It's just a day where you're feeling you're floating, moving onward until the second stop sign of the month comes. And this is now Venus's turn to be up against the wall with Saturn. Saturn doing the same thing to her as he did with Mars. Mars was your action, got stopped. Venus is your love, your desire, what you're reaching for. And Saturn is like, are you sure? Is, is this really what you want? You know, if it has to do with a choice of romantic partner, well, if you knew what you wanted, you wouldn't doubt. So suddenly here, you're second guessing it. If it has to do with money, money placement, investment, and Saturn saying, like, are you sure you want those stocks? Well, you better not get them if you have doubt, right? So Saturn is looking out for you. If you were convinced, there'd be no stop sign, right? So hang in there just a day or two, you will know, you will see. Because already on the 29th, whatever you were doubting is now so aligned that there's no room for second guesses or anything. And then I just see you powering through it. This is awesome, Aquarius. That's what you want. And this is how we should learn how to navigate in our lives. Then we have Venus coming up with the next stop sign here, squaring off on Saturn again. We're finding ourselves up against a decision that we need to make, which either has to do with feelings, emotions, love and romance, or also money. And Saturn is always, like I said, when Mars squared up on uh, Saturn there on the 19th, it's the same thing. Saturn's looking out for you so that you can make the right decision. It's just asking you to slow down for the day, look at what you're really feeling. If it is about purchasing, buying something, then you might want to ask yourself, or Saturn may want to be asking you, do you really need it? Do you, or do you just want it, right? Is it something you're going to regret? If it's all good, if it's meant to be, you will know just in a day or two, same thing when it comes to your relationship. This could be a day where you might feel a little bit, you know, at distance. Think about Saturn with rings, right? That you might not be able to get to the, that very deep core where Venus, of course, is always the most happy. But then again, you know, we have times where we grow and that is what Saturn's message for us is all about. So that's the 27th and just already within the next couple of days, whatever was in question will now come to you with that inner sense of knowingness, okay? When we feel confident, that's when we want to act. That's when we're all at one with ourselves, right? So we got a couple of those stop signs this month. Uh, it's all good. I feel that uh, it, mm, we need these small little moments of adjustments so that we can get things right. But then the planet is, you know, in a direct motion. Then both Mars and Venus will be moving onward quickly from uh, these two points. And then we have, of course, the, uh, Mars moving into Aries on the 29th. So that allows us to, to really get up and running with those projects that we are all uh, signed up for. And of course, we have those contracts, spiritual contracts that we have, that we set ourselves up for. You're good to go in this area now because Mars will be moving into your relationship area, Libra. This is where you're going to see uh, all the action take place from the 29th and then straight through that of um, February. That will be a time where you're going to be interacting a whole lot more, more dynamically. You might find your partner might be that much more fiery and persistent and also taking more initiative as well. So there we have it. This is what we can expect for January, and I'm already working on your February scopes, which is looking pretty cool. So I'll see you next month.
I know.